Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff Porter from Rule for New GM. It's been a hot minute. It's been a busy summer. Um, I have a couple of other projects I've been working on, one nearing Kickstarter, um, as well as this. And I've had my kids home, you know, during the summer, summer break. So it's been pretty busy. You know, I feel like everything's kind of in slow mo, uh, trying to get everything done while, you know, at the same time balancing everything that they're doing. But let's jump into this. Forsaken Heroes. This is our second playtest, playtest 1.1. Um, this one is more not so much adding a bunch of stuff. We we did throw in some more information, but more of like rewording, making things simpler, and uh kind of really rounding out these basic mechanics. Cause I feel like once we have this base built, it'll be so easy to just you know start sprouting limbs and and, and building out the tree. So this first page uh, just kind of explains, like I just said, you know, some of the differences that you're going to see, some of the stuff that we added. There is a link to a feedback form, just a Google form. A couple questions like the last one. Really helpful, by the way. We got a lot of feedback and uh, we really took a lot of that stuff into account. Uh, and then, you know, what we have planned and what we have been working on. The basic rules have pretty much remained uh, unchanged there are some uh, small differences in like the wording and everything I know a big thing was uh, being knocked to zero and what happens there so we kind of reworded that when a player character's health reaches zero they enter a dying state and require immediate attention um, this was created because I'm not really a huge fan of the way that 5e does being knocked down uh it, it almost feels kind of like a joke when you have somebody who can bonus action healing word and boom you're back up you're fighting like nothing happened uh with our system it kind of puts a little bit more emphasis on staying healthy and if you are knocked to zero getting on that quickly and getting to that person who's been knocked down so while the person is lying there at zero they have to keep rolling a might check on each one of their turns if they fail their first one then they're going to be in a near death state and if they fail two times in a row that's all it takes they die um so we really wanted to add uh emphasis to that you can still get picked up so for instance if you're at zero you fall down you have a priest who heals you you can come back up get your health and everything, but you will have a near death uh, debuff. So you'll lose uh, max health, weapon damage, weapon attack rolls, everything will take a huge uh, debuff to that. We added in a optional severe injuries. So for instance, you know, uh, somebody gets crit on, uh, they get, you know, they lose a hand or something that just sticks with them throughout the campaign. Uh, our action point system remains the same. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback about that. Uh, proficiencies, we kind of changed a little bit. Combat advantages, um, not really any differences there. We did add in like the initiative uh, mechanic, uh, how you roll for your you know melee attacks and whatnot. Because when you're casting magic and stuff, we have all of that laid out in the casting magic mechanic um the armor damage mitigation remains there that's one of my favorite things about this system is when you're fighting and you hit somebody who's running plate armor i feel like that should have some kind of bonus for that person i i, I Aside from just raising their AC, there needs to be, because if you're just going up, you're hitting a guy in full plate armor with a sword, I'll, I'll give you some damage, but there's going to be a little bit of a reduction. So that remains the same. Um, resting and taking a break. Attributes. Uh, okay, so with the weapons, we did add in this little top part uh, to kind of help understand the layout. Very similar to other uh, TTRPG. So if you're, you know, a, a, an average player, you should be able to, uh, go through that. No problem with the armor. There was a couple questions about that. So for instance, 
Uh, we have an example in here. So like the chain mail uh, gives you 13 armor, minus one damage from melee and ranged weapon attacks, and then you get a plus one bonus to dex checks. So it's kind of in that sweet spot between heavy armor and medium armor. It's still classified as medium, but there's different types. So you could get crude chain mail, uh, which has one less armor and no bonus to dex checks. So throughout this book that we're doing, in there there could be some loot tables and stuff where it's like you know an uh, an undead soldier is not going to have you know the cleanest thing of chainmail you could find crude chainmail and maybe we'll add in you know this mechanic of polishing armor cleaning it up and getting to that point uh but i like having the scaling effects of you know that crude polished great um so you know it's just more math right which Hey man, I'm all for it. I love the math. Let's let's get it out. The spell list, um, pretty much unchanged. I I think we did pretty good with the spell system. There were some duplicates, some different things that were named wrong, um, but I think we have a pretty good base. Um, a couple of touch ups here and there with the wording maybe and some stuff like that, but um, I think for the most part it's looking pretty good. Um, so here you go. Character creation, I don't think was in the first packet. Uh, we just gave you some pre-generated characters. Uh, here you can see the races, the different bonuses that they have. Quick description about them. We do have some of our own custom stuff, uh, which we're really excited about. And then this is kind of the biggest part of this packet, 1.1, is you can actually see the... Uh, class abilities, what levels they get it at, and all of that stuff. So for with the Warden, we have a short kind of description about it. The Warden class is a skilled archer and nature-based fighter. They are able to command and fight alongside an animal companion, using their bond to enhance their abilities in battle. They are able to use their knowledge of the natural world to track and hunt their enemies and use the terrain to their advantage. Wardens are resilient and able to survive in harsh environments are also able to use their connection to nature to heal their allies. Their abilities focus on ranged combat, survival, and utility of their animal companions. So, right off the bat, you know, this is sounding a lot like a ranger, and it is, you know, very similar to a ranger. Um, some changes that we've made with our class system is I think we're just going to stick with 10 levels. The reason is let's be honest when was the last time you took a full campaign zero or one to 20 in uh in 5e uh, i think a lot of the fun is at those lower levels before your character turns into a god um which i mean you could still turn into a god right uh but it's just mechanically when you get to the highest level it's not gonna be god tier abilities and whatnot so i think sticking to 10 levels uh, is going to work out just fine. And as well, we added our version um, of subclasses. The way I'm seeing it is more of talent tree, more like a skill tree from a traditional, you know, like MMO. Uh, so, for instance, the warden at level four, they can choose to specialize into a ranger, a beast lord, or a marksman. Each one of those have their own separate abilities. Um, that you'll be able to learn and grow into as well. Uh, for instance, so like the Ranger, that is actually like a dual wield DPS role. The Beast Lord is more of like uh, using their pet as like a, a frontline tank and and more synergizing with that. And then the Marksman is your traditional uh, Ranger Hunter class. So I think with these, uh, you know, obviously you'll be able to kind of uh, delve into your class a little bit more and, and, and really specialize it to what you want to do or what the maybe what the group needs, right? Maybe the group showed up with four wardens. <laughs> well, this way you guys could kind of, you know, differentiate uh, a bit and, and really help each other. Um and then the starting equipment, uh, kind of what we have so far. So we have the same thing with the warrior. 
the priest, you can see uh, what they get at different levels, what it does. Uh, for instance, uh, level uh, four warrior, uh, you can go into a ravager, guardian, commander, and then you get plate armor, the ability to wear it. Uh, plate armor the warrior gets it before the other classes so there's going to be some differences there uh, as well with what you're even able to wear um, and what you're able to to uh to use uh, so same thing with the priest and the magus and then we did add some more stuff about the attributes and skills i like this system that we have going on with the the point by so we're still going to have a method where you can roll uh so we're going to figure that out but right now um with the point by system the way we're envisioning it is starting at zero then you add in your racial attributes so like if you're an orc you get plus two might so you'll start with two might and that would give you a plus one bonus um and then using either 15 points, which would be like a normal build, like, hey guys, we're gonna have a nice, fun, lighthearted campaign, or the idea of you only get 10, and this is gonna be a little bit more of a more difficult, hardcore campaign. So kind of taking some stuff from um, some like action RPGs and stuff like that, um, kind of taking something in from there. Is it gonna stay like this? Probably not. I don't like the attribute starting at zero, but I also don't want to just start at 10 for obvious reasons. It may end up being that that's the way that we have to go, um, which is fine. I just kind of wanted it to be a little bit different, but I think with the the different point by systems and, and, and stuff like that, it, it would be fine. Um, so that's something we did uh, change up the skills a bit. We have like astronomy, engineering, um <clears throat> intimidate can use might or charisma there's a couple of those uh athletics now we just have athletics and it could be might or dex um sense heading tracking so we've got some of our own uh stuff mixed in there along with kind of just classic you know everybody has athletics uh history you know th there's just you know certain flagstones that you need for that stuff and then we have a copy of our character sheet right now um so we have the might dexterity wisdom charisma intelligence um we've talked about it briefly before but we combined strength and constitution into might uh the reason we did that is because if you're playing a melee class a warrior and you had to put into might and constitution kind of robs you of that secondary like if you wanted to be a charismatic or intelligent warrior um because if you're a spellcaster you really only have to kind of focus on that one attribute uh so it just kind of made sense to us you know kind of spread it out make those martial classes so they can do something else other than i hit hard and i take hits hard um kind of add some more you know rp value to that Health, armor, speed, description, there's the skills, equipment, class ability, spells, inventory. So this is kind of what we're looking at so far. So kind of the main takeaways, the big differences, you can kind of see the attribute system. You can go into a, excuse me, a deeper dive of the four starting classes. I do say starting classes because I've got a whole notebook full of stuff that I want to do. It's just a matter of uh, getting it down first. So it has been a while. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to try to really kick it into gear and get more videos and more of this stuff done. Uh, so download in the description below as well as the Google form for uh, feedback. And you know, I think it's like six questions. Uh, just help us out there. And then we are going to be looking at getting together a group for a one shot using our new system. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely comment down below uh, and I can get in contact with you. I wouldn't mind because we're going to do an in-house one and we're going to record it 
do all that stuff so you guys can kind of see it in action. And then after that, maybe doing a couple different ones with, you know, like three people who, who want to try it out. Um, and then that way we can kind of get multiple different experiences doing it. So a lot of big stuff going on. Um, glad to be finally getting some free time and hopefully I'll be able to, uh, get some more of those videos up and, uh, some more stuff about Forsaken Heroes. Um, if you're at all interested in the other stuff that I'm doing, I've got links down in the description below. TikTok, uh, uh, tabletop storybooks, um, short one, one, one and a half minute videos for NPCs, encounters, quests, items, um, just kind of a cool little fun side thing I'm doing. And then, uh, Champions of the Over There is a TCG that I'm launching, uh, this summer based on ttrpgs and uh and characters and stuff so links to all that stuff down in the description below uh remember to comment if you're interested in doing an actual play test um and going through all of it with me as as the gm and uh see you guys in the next one